Azu. It's a very popular designer board game that took the board gaming world by storm. It certainly introduced me to the wondrous world of abstract board games. No other abstract games really have ever seen an explosion in popularity this huge, aside from Chess or Go. It's no Monopoly, but the game has gotten quite some recognition and jumped to BGG's rank 1 in the family and abstract category. It is also currently rank 44 overall in the website. As well currently has two sequels, and I happen to own all of them. So in this video, I would like to compare the three and tell you which one you should get. So we have Vanilla, Sintra, and Summer Pavilion. I like Sintra the best, followed by the close second Vanilla and then the extremely inferior Summer Pavilion. Yes, I absolutely disliked Summer Pavilion. I already got a buyer for that game as we speak. Anyway, let's start with Vanilla Azul. Vanilla Azul is probably one of the best introductory games out there, which is also why it spawned a lot of Chinese fakes in the market, lol. It's eye-catching, simple to play, and has some tense player interactions. You usually need to put a bit of thought into your next move, because the game punishes bad decisions. You need to have the right amount of tiles, because if you take too little, your actions are super inefficient, but if you take too much, you will get penalized for not being able to fit it on your board. There's also the timing factor of it. If you take the tiles you want too early, you probably not take that much, but if you take the tiles later, you might take too much or even none at all. So you need to balance out and consider whether or not your actions are actually worth it. The highlight of the game for me is the hate drafting. It's basically drafting or taking things from the communal area with the focus of how much pain and suffering you can inflict to your opponent rather than how many points you can get. It's got the same fun factor as pushing your friends into a pool or off a cliff, depending on what kind of friend I suppose, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Hate drafting makes the game tense and forces you to always know what your opponents are after. All that packed into this small gorgeous game that takes at most an hour to play just makes it a fast family fun. It could get a bit semi though after a few plays because everyone has the same starting board. They have an alternate board side just to make it a bit different, but my gaming group and I agrees that it sucks so I'll just ignore that. <laughs> Another small complaint for me would be the kind of wonky scoring mechanism. It's just the most difficult aspect of the game to explain or get for some reason. These are nitpicks though, so it doesn't really deter me from liking the game at all. Then we have Azul Stained Glass of Sintra. Not Sinatra by the way, I don't know why everyone sees that. Sintra feels like the mid-tier gamer version of Azul. It's got slightly more complex and satisfying ways of scoring, and a different limiting variable is also introduced into the game, which brings in another balanced mechanism that you have to consider. Unlike Vanilla Azul, where you can just place the tiles you just obtain in any rows of your board, in Sintra, you have this Glassman that moves towards the column where you just place your tiles. But here's the thing, Glassman can only move to the right. This means that you are only limited to the column that the Glassman is standing on, plus the columns to his right. You could reset this Glassman back all the way to the left, but this will cost you a turn, so you basically just lose a turn just to do that. The balancing part then comes in when you put that glassman mechanism against the scoring mechanism. In Sintra, you score one column plus any columns to the right of it that you had completed at least once. So I'm sure you are able to now see where the balancing part comes in. On one hand, you want to have as many columns as possible completed towards the right side before you complete the left ones. Ideally, you would want to basically start from the rightmost column and work your way up column by column to the left to get the most points. But your glassman only moves to the right, so if you focus on the last few columns at the start of the game, you will have to keep resetting often. This, plus the similar balancing aspect that exists in the first game, is what makes Sintra a more mid-tier and strategic game. The game also fixes the first Azul's replayability problem, as everyone starts with different configurations every game. To be honest, I'm not really sure if I like this change. Having the same starting board feels more level. But from my past sessions, the different setup in Sintra never really felt unfair, so there's that. That's basically my only complaint about this version of Azul. And then there's this third game where they just made this giant U-turn into Snoozeville. Summer Pavilion is very different in many peculiar ways compared to the first two games. They trashed many things that made the first two Azuls appealing and fun to play. Remember those balanced whatevers that I talked about before? Gone. Interesting scoring mechanisms? Gone. Getting punished for bad decisions? Gone. Hate drafting? Gone. Desire to play this game? Gone. This game's just so sh- So, I might sound like I just don't like change, right? But that's not true. I hate changes when it's done just for the sake of being different, which is what I think the designers do to this game. The best way to describe this game is, I don't know, because that's how I feel most of the time playing it. 
In the first two games, you worry about getting too little tiles or too many tiles that you can't place on the board. In this game, you always want more tiles. Even if you somehow got too many, there are four spaces on which you can retain these tiles. And if you manage to screw up that too, like, uh, just, just, just toss them. That's right, there's no penalties for that at all. So since there's basically zero penalty up for anything, the hate drafting part of it is just completely gone. You technically could still do it, but it went from feeling like pushing your friend into a pool to just getting iced tea when you ordered hot tea. It just became a mild inconvenience that you could just shrug off, really. Scoring in this game is also dead simple. Once you know the rules, you will instantly know how to get the most points from a tile placement. It has none of Sintra's satisfying scoring mechanism at all. You basically want to continue placing tiles adjacent to the last cluster of tiles you created, that's it. If anything, the bonus tiles mechanism is actually rather interesting, but they just had to implement it so poorly because they had to add this part of the game where you take turns placing your tiles on the board. Back in the first and second game, resolving actions takes around 20 seconds at most, so you barely have to wait for anyone. In Summer Pavilion, however, you have to resolve it by turn order at the end of your round because you don't instantly place the tiles you just took. Yep. You gotta place your tiles, then wait for player 2, player 3, player 4, all because of the stupid bonus tiles. As a result, rounds go so much longer in this game. Also, the bonus tiles refresh right after you took some from it. I really don't get why they don't just limit it per round. At least it would make these turn orders mean a bit more. The each round a different wild color mechanism is okay, I guess, which also makes the drafting part slightly different. But it doesn't really save the game from being boring as hell to be honest. I get it that they want to make something different to the first two games and that's fine, but I don't think this is the right way to do it. The game now just feels way too easy and Euro to what I consider to be an Azul game. The most Azul aspect about the game is only the drafting mechanism. Honestly, if you want something that's not mean and does not have much player interaction, I would much rather recommend Plan B's other game, Reef over Pavilion. It's got a much more satisfying puzzle-like feel than Pavilion. So here's the summary. If you are new to board gaming and don't mind a rather mean player interaction board game, I would recommend Azul Vanilla straight off the bat. You will have a great time with that. But if you find that Azul Vanilla is a bit light and want more or you're just an intermediate board game in general, I would get Azul Sintra instead. If you like either Vanilla or Sintra and want more of the same, do not get Pavilion because it's got a very different feel to both those games. If you want a less mean Azul and don't mind an even lesser player interaction and still want the puzzle feeling of Azul, get Riff. And finally, if you still somehow wanna get Pavilion, please please consider many other abstracty games like Lanterns or Sagrada instead. Let me know what you all think about this in the comment, I hope I don't get a lot of hate. And I'll see you all later, thanks for watching!